articulation, I've been able to find staccato. Staccato is also noted in the sheet music, um, in the first impression and also in the second impression a lot of times. Um, I've also been able to find portato and legato, but not in the sheet music. So that's, uh, that's what we found while we were rehearsing. Of course, I already introduced my friend Benjamin who's sitting here. Uh, from the choir, he's not only from the choir, but he also performed Carnival 9, the first impression with me in a project bear ensemble, which is called ELP 9, some time ago in May, I think. And uh, while we were doing that, I was also going through the other parts because we were working with six musicians. Um, so I was also looking at, at their parts in order to help improve all of the different parts. I was listening very carefully to the audio, and at some point I noticed, oh, the sheet music is incorrect. I didn't, I didn't know that often, so Brentwood did a great job, but there is one point uh, at which you have the synthesizer playing portato and then legato, which is a very, very um, well-known bit, and I'll, I'll let you listen to that later on in a bit, uh, so that should be, uh, that should be fine, I'll, I'll have you uh, listen to that as well. And there's the legato as well, so there's portato and legato in the same bit. Um, there might also be one legato in the piece, while there are multiple legato uh, um, symbols written down in the sheet music, but a lot of them don't make sense, because either you don't hear the legato uh, and is unplayable, or the legato moves from a note to a rest, which does not make any sense whatsoever. But there's one legato in bass during the introduction of the third impression, where it might be that the bass guitar is indeed playing a legato slide downward, but it's very hard to hear because it's so soft in the total, uh, in, in what they've done with the different dynamics and loudnesses of the different uh, instruments. Now then the martellato, uh, there's one point, well no, there's two points at which I would say there's a martellato, at the end of the synthesizer solo in the second impression and at the end of the second impression because it's a very loud staccato but it's just written as a staccato in the sheet music but we can listen to it and you can agree or disagree we can have a fun conversation perhaps afterwards about that arpeggios oh, there were very little things written out in symbols i'm afraid so that was very disappointing while i was working on that analysis for a lot of hours but there were some um, debatable arpeggios in the piece which were written out, which is in the organ solo in the second, in, in the third impression. Now ornaments, of course, uh, I've somewhat been able to find a modern. It's not written out, of course. Sorry, it's not uh, in symbol form, so it's written written out. Um, yeah, it's a bit forcibly. I mean, you could see it as a modern. It does qualify, but. Perhaps given the place it's somewhere located in between a lot of notes, you might say it's just some random switch of notes and it's not really a modern, so you could debate me on that, I guess. I did not find any trill though, so that's also interesting to note, which is the other way around, more than being uh, going uh, an, a note downwards and having the trilling movement, trill being going a note upward and having the trilling movement. Um, the turn, yeah, I found a lot of turns. So that's, that's interesting, and of course they were written out, there was no actual symbol, which is this symbol of course, right, there was no symbol like that, but there's a lot of turns, also in solos, they really like the turns, and the ghost notes, my god, I stopped writing down which ghost notes there were, because there were even more ghost notes than, than triplets, no, okay, not more than triplets, but there were a lot of ghost notes anyway, they are really, really into ghost notes. Um, surprisingly, a lot of tremolos as well. Um, partially they were written out and there were also some symbols, so tremolo was one of the things where you did have the symbol for it as well, uh, with the stripes, but there, were also, there was also a tremolo which was written out and was happy to find that in the organ improvisation, uh, the organ solo in the first impression. Um, we'll get to that when we listen to the audio. So there's also which I would call the what I would call the abstract term, which is also fun, and this is where you will be frowning upon me if you are music theories, theorists, because it's not really a real ornament. It's something I've come up with while I was analyzing this piece, because it's not really the move um, going down one note, going down another note, and going up one note. So with the small distance, the distance being uh, a second, I think it's in English. 
which is called a two, uh, which is the turn, but it's like an abstract turn. So the movement generally is the same. You move from somewhere up to down to further down and then back to up to the same middle. So the movement is the same, it's a V shape, but it's not necessarily with seconds. So that's why I call it the abstract turn, because I also found that quite often I might have not written down where often enough, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of them in there anyway. So there's also a key as with an accent, also not a real ornament, but I thought it was fun to mention it. If anything, it would be considered an ornament, I guess. Um, which means that, of course, chiasmus means that there's it's based on the letter chi from Greek, and that means, of course, that there's some kind of mirroring effect, right? So there's accents in a certain sequence on the notes, and then there's the mirrored effect of that due to placement of rests and notes. We'll get to that when we get to the analysis. Oh? I need to hurry up. Yeah? Have we already had one hour? or Because we started at 23? Benjamin's uh, helping me manage the time, by the way. We're 55 minutes, so close to one hour, yeah. Uh, it's 50 minutes with me, so I'm going to okay. go on for 10 more minutes. But thanks for the mention. I think we should be able to do this next up. would be not very complicated stuff. So the dynamics. There is literally no dynamic signs in the sheet music, which was <laughs> not a very fun result for the dynamic analysis. So I had an audio analysis of the dynamics. You can look at the, the audio picture. I think it's explained fairly uh, clearly um, what happens. Now the initial one, so this is one, two, three for the three impressions. You already got that. The uh, first impression, I have the impression, and yes, this is a pun, I have the impression that somehow the dynamics keep on increasing and it does get somewhat louder throughout the piece, but I can't pinpoint exactly where it happens. So either there's some incredibly gentle and subtle increase of dynamics, or there is none at all. So either it's meta 40, 40 all the way through, or there is some general increase after the initial bars of the organ intro, which of course is the same dynamics, loudness. I'll leave that up to you listening to the audio track at home. Um, we'll also have a look at the second impression, which starts off really loud. Uh, do note that the three impressions have uh, somewhat the same starting uh, dynamics of loudness, so that's also interesting. So the second impression starts off really loud, and then at some point it all stops, right? And you get this really gentle, silent, soft piano solo with some of the bass, bassy guitar notes every now and then, also percussion instruments really creating atmosphere rather than rhythm. Uh, so you, you know which section I mean, obviously. Um, so that's that's where the, the uh, dynamics really break down. And then you have three different movements after each other on the piano, which increases upwards, which would lead to the increase of the dynamics. So then it becomes a bit louder. And then you have... Um, some sudden switches between soft parts and loud parts. So that's really to raise dynamics there because it's a straight switch from loud to soft and from soft to loud. This is also to raise dynamics. This you could see as because it's in three parts to raise dynamics, but you could also see it as uh, overgangsdynamic because the increase in dynamics is so subtle that perhaps you would not be able to capture it properly using actually actual words like piano pianissimo, etc. So you might say it would probably be written down like a sort of gentle crescendo, like like poco 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 crescendo, but that would make it overgangsdynamic. But then it would be like a small crescendo on each of the different systems, like not over all three of them because there's a clear section, but you could call that overgangsdynamic. Of course, crescendo, no decrescendo in the entire piece. So after the soft, loud, soft, loud, soft switches, you have some increase in, in, in the dynamics actually in one note. So you have pom 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 And then you get some rapidly raging upwards movement on the piano, which even gets louder. So that's twice occurring. Uh, so there's some real overgangs dynamic there, and then either to us to raise the dynamics or overgangs dynamic, depending on how you would like to define it. 
and then it drops down again to something soft at the end of that middle part and then we move on with the introduction to the piano solo in the second part and it just explodes and we get that loud crazy loud dynamics back and the tempo also gets crazy fast again and in the third impression we also start off loud and then at some point uh, you have some mimicking movement where you have complementary rhythm between I think the synth, the organ and the bass and the drum so it's pom 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 and then you get the organ part you know what I mean that section right so I'll, li I'll let you listen to it on the audio so it gets a lot softer there and then it gently increases and we'll have a look at both I said mezzo piano slash 40 slash and then we get mezzo 40 and then slash 40 so it's a gentle increase in the note down where you can hear the volume increase it's clear that it increases in section so this is definitely to raise dynamics and then near the ending when we get the the um, what's it called the arpeggiator so the crucial ending which keeps on accelerating getting faster um, that melody melody on the synthesizer that's a bit softer than what was before that with the singing opening the final part of the third impression um, about glory and their graves needing no flowers the tapes have recorded the names that's much louder than the the final part well it's a bit louder it's not much louder but we'll listen to this uh, in the audio tracks in a bit uh, do remind me of the dynamics that i don't forget to bring that up in the audio as well so how are we managing on four minutes for four slides oh god <laughs> we're a bit behind on, we're a bit behind on time so the instrumentation that's used, we'll just go through this very briefly. First impression you have, of course, heat synthesizers, bass synthesizer, um, piano and the Hammond organ. You have the bass guitar and the guitar and the vocals for Greg Lake. And for Carl Palmer you have drums, including the cowbell. That's, that's noteworthy. And of course, he has the tambourine when we open with the part two of the first impression, which is very well known. Uh, welcome back my friends to the show that never runs. We're so glad you could attend right that fast. So he begins with a Kaban, 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 Kaban in the back with the tambourine. And of course the gong is very well known during the first part of the first impression. Second impression then of course again we have the piano. We also have the synth, briefly only um, for a solo with the bass guitar all the way through and the drums as well. Um, we have this, during this synth solo, where the synth actually imitates steel pans with the sound, which is also interesting for instrumentation. Uh, you also have the drums moving to timbales, which is a different kind of drums, right? So they sound a bit different. And you also get at the back the clavies, which you can see here, so that's just sticks. All those sound click, 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 click. We'll get to that when we have the audio and the maracas. The maraca in English, maracas in Dutch which is shaking instruments, so the seat in there, so you can, yeah, it sounds a bit like a shaking egg, right? It's similar, you know, what, what it sounds like somewhat. Um, and then you get the, the softer bit, the middle bit of the second impression where everything just drops down with the dynamics we've shown there already. And then you get the flexitones, one of the interesting instruments you get there, which is uh, a bit of a <coughs> kind of sound, right? But also with, with a bell sound in, in, in there as well. So how does it work? It looks really interesting. The basic idea is you hold it with uh, your thumb and your hand here and here. And when you shake it, these are little, little, uh, these little mallets. They hit against the metal plate. So the metal plate starts resonating. That produces the sound, which is the bell-like sound, of course, because every time it hits it, it's like a bell being struck by the mallet inside the clock, for example, something like that, or inside the bell. And once you press down the metal sheet with your thumb and make this angle smaller or larger, um, you will create some kind of a uh, spooky effect, like the so you can change the pitch. And that's actually why it's called a flex a tone, because you flex a tone, right? Ah. So very fun instrument. 